Today on another creepy as shit episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. And this eight-year-old spends the night at their grandparents' house. It's anything but warm and cozy, as unseen voices and shadows emerge late in the night, long after everyone else has drifted off to sleep. Was this child intruding on the daily activities of these spirits? Or did something much darker seek out the child with the intention to terrorize the living? The ask the question and much more, today, on Real Ghost Stories Online. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. To share your real ghost stories with us, we'd absolutely love to hear them. Of course, you can also write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. If you'd like access to our bonus episodes and uh, the uh, whole archive of episodes as well, and new bonus ones every single week, uh, check out ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash realghoststories. That's where you'll get access to all of those, as well as advanced episodes of the show. All of it commercial free. Tony and Carol with you on today's episode of the program. What's going on? I got to tell you, there's not a lot of things that make me happier than hearing fake Robert Stack say this episode's <laughs> going to be creepy as shit. It is. You know, Robert <laughs> uh, Robert delivers. I love hearing him talk like that. I'm glad he's, uh, you know, he's, he's creepy just... creepy as shit episode. Yeah, I mean, it's the stuff he always probably wanted to say uh, on Unsolved Mysteries, but never had the opportunity. The other day, I was listening to something, maybe some podcast or the... I don't know what it was. Mm-hmm. But um, I was in my car, so it was a podcast or public radio. Yeah. And um, they had uh, Robert Stack, like they played, they were like, must have been a podcast. It even made an episode of Unsolved Mysteries, and they had his voice. And now all I can hear, like when I see, I just, he's like the announcer for the show. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yep. That. Robert. He yeah. his own show at one time. I forget. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's funny, the crazy shit that uh, you'll hear him say. I had a crazy dream the other night involving uh, fake voices. Um, so I, I had this dream that I had emulated uh, Tom Brokaw's voice. Don't know why. It's like, like OK, I mean, maybe someday. Uh, but uh, I, then, then I played it and then I got a call from Tom Brokaw and he was very upset that I was using fake Tom Brokaw. And I'm like, it's satire, you know, I don't mean anything bad. And I was like, I was I was arguing, but reasoning with him as to why I was I was doing it. And he was just kind of like, this is not uh, something that's, uh, you know, ethical to do. Uh, I was on NBC Nightly News. And, you know, it was it was it was fun <laughs> that I woke and you're up. Like, but 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 because you don't want to upset him. He's Tom Brokaw. I know. I know. Tom Brokaw calling me in my dreams. So. But in real about. life, you'd be like, sir, sir, really sorry about that. Sorry, I'm sorry about that, but um, I'm going to do it again. It's a computer talking. It's not you. It's, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Obviously, somebody like lays in bed at night thinking about whose voice he's going to take over next. I do. I Tell do think me. about these things. I uh, yeah, I don't know what I want to. I, I, I think uh, it'd be fun to do a Keith Morrison one. I think that'd be kind of interesting. Um, oh, hell yeah. But, uh, yeah, I just, I got to take the, because it takes a lot of time to work on that. But, yeah, in, in the coming weeks, months, I'll, I'll have time, maybe. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. First letter says, hey, Tony and the gang, here's my story. When I was eight, we moved to a new house. It wasn't new, but new to us. We lived there for two months. This is why. Every night, the water in the kitchen sink would start running after we went to bed, the first to hear it would get up, shut it off. It was the knobs you had to turn, one for hot, one for cold. On the last night we stayed in that house, not planned, I was going to stay the night with my cousin before my parents took me to his house. I had to take a shower. I was terrified to shut the bathroom door, so I left it open, put something heavy against the door to keep it open. The moment I turned the shower on, the door slammed shut. I started screaming for my parents, but no sound was coming out of my mouth. They ran to the door, but couldn't get it to open. It seemed like eternity, but only a few seconds, they got the door open. I finally get my cousin's house. We stayed up pretty late. He falls to sleep before I do. 
As I'm lying in bed, I hear talking in the hallway. I look towards the door leading to the hall and I see two large shadows. I can't remember what they were saying, but I know they were talking about us. I wake my cousin and tell him what's happening. He says, you're just dreaming. Go back to sleep. Now the shadows are gone. I try to close my eyes to sleep and I hear something else. As I look towards the door, I see what I see to be a demon face in the mirror on his dresser. I run into the living room, grab the cordless phone, run outside, called my mom to pick me up. I wanted to go home. We get home and I go to sleep on the couch. The water in the kitchen sink turns on. I look in the kitchen as I'm lying on the couch and I see another shadow person. This one had a tall hat unlike the other two. I start to get up and something pulls me back to the couch. My parents heard and ran to the living room and it released me. We pack up a few things, go to my grandparents' house for the rest of the night. I finally get to sleep and I have a nightmare about something getting my little sister and drowning her in the creek in the backyard. I wake up screaming, freezing cold with cold sweats. It's my story. Hopefully it's not too hard to read. Thanks. Thoughts on that? That's creepy. Like you get home and then the same old shit starts with the water turning itself on. Mm -hmm. Like that, like I get why they'd only live there for two months. I would, like, uh, I would stay it out a little bit longer, I think, and just, uh, you know, enjoy the scenery, enjoy the excitement, <laughs> enjoy the I moment. If, let's put wagers, kids. Everybody put in a dollar and let's guess what time the water turns on tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll turn it into a game. It'll be a fun family activity. That would be one of those great, and horrible. If you lose, you have to get up and shut it off. I got a better one. Here we go. Stand by. Oh, okay. So this this pertains to staying in the haunted house. Hang on one second. <laughs> to be a I'm perfect, very excited, perfect uh, contest for uh, for radio back in the day, or or now uh, for that matter, really, uh, if anyone still listened. Um, let's see here. Uh, okay. <laughs> here we go. All right, here we go. This is this is a radio person, and this is the newest, hottest promotion at Power 92. Here's what's going on at Power 92. We're out broadcasting live by the haunted house down the way. It's a real one. It's the one that the uh, seven uh, people were murdered in seven uh, seven months ago. It's all cleaned up, blood spatters and everything, but uh, they do say it's haunted. Uh, we have uh, had a couple people do some seances in there. It's the first person, uh, the last person, rather, to leave wins the house. That's right. Stay in the house, and we'll terrorize you and show the spirits every single night, and you could win the house from Power. Power 92. <laughs> that was funny. That's, uh, that's the shit. Um, yeah. That'd be an interesting, because there's always the ones where it's like, peep the people in the car, or their hands on the car, or this or that. We did, or not, it wasn't me, it was a previous station uh, when I was a kid, I remember. Uh, and it was, originally it was, they were living in the car. And then that took way too long, and they were in the car for like, I think the person wanted it like 28 days or something. Um, and they got like breaks every little bit, you know. Jesus Christ, did they have to live in there with other people? Yes, it was, oh it was God. it was four people in the car. That would cause me PTSD for the rest of my life. And it got to like 28 days and then they won the Geo Metro. Um, you know, or <laughs> it was so Like was, you didn't even see a Geo Metro now and you I know. start shaking. Oh my God. You won the four thousand dollar car. Uh and uh it's yeah. Uh, but then they realized that took way too long. The next year it was the you know, hands on the car, and that lasts usually less than twenty four hours. Well, I'm going to interrupt this broadcast and tell you that we are now under a severe thunderstorm warning where I live. So if you hear some crazy stuff or if I just go away. You need to take your precautions right now. Uh, get under something sturdy. Uh, stay away from uh, windows. Uh, Not a tornado warning, yep. just a severe thunderstorm warning. But we have to keep in mind, severe thunderstorms can be very deadly as well, especially lightning. So make sure you don't go outside with any sort of golf clubs, flagpoles, or anything. Or this laptop you're recording on right now. Yeah. Climbing trees right now is not advised either, or telephone poles in case you're one of those type of people who like to randomly climb telephone poles during thunderstorms. We're here to tell you, Sunny92 does not advise climbing <laughs> telephone poles during thunderstorms. 
Sunny 92 also does not advise going and rescuing random cats from trees or peering in at your neighbors who are having sex currently in the upstairs bedroom. Climbing that tree also not advised by Sunny 92. A better variety for your workday. <laughs> We're getting word right now that uh, down the road from the studios, uh, there's actually uh, a tornado that's ripping through town. But uh, first, uh, your sunny five-day forecast, partly cloudy after the storm, a low of 74. Tomorrow, sunshine and 68. Your sunny keyword today is tornado. We'll talk about the dead people right after Billy Ocean on Sunny. I used to think that love was just a fairy tale. <laughs> Although here, if you go, there's a thunderstorm warning. Everybody's like, oh, I got to go outside. And, yeah. Okay, check this out. Let me get me a beer and let me uh, get my That's camcorder. That's what they do here. Like, they have to go see it for themselves. You can't just get, look at a radar. I swear to God. It's like, no, I got to see it. Back in the uh, 80s and early 90s, there wasn't like date lines. Like, date lines weren't brand new. They were just just coming into to age. Uh, and Sunday nights, though, usually, this was prior to a lot of cable, would have like disaster, like the world's biggest disaster shows. And I swear to God, like nine out of 10 videos were out of Wichita <laughs> with storms. <laughs> and I didn't realize it till I moved there years yeah, later. And I'm like, funny. and I go there and I'm like, I mean, there's like one iconic scene too that I remember. We're hardy stock out yeah. here, I tell you. There's one like it was like in every like Sunday night disaster show after the Disney Sunday night movie, and it was under a bridge and overpass. Tornado goes over, and wasn't like John in that our our friend? Um, I think he was. No, he. I don't think he was. Somebody I don't think was. He was in that. It was one of the local TV stations. There's somebody that we knew that was like literally mm-hmm. in that. I'm like, are you serious? Yeah, it was just, there were so many. Was, like, you remember that one? The, where they were there, that's a tornado, and they cut away right before it hit the house. Like, oh, that's great, yeah. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Let's go to, uh, let's see here. Another letter, it says, one of my many paranormal stories relates to the spooky goings-on during a ghost hunt at Cullingham Castle in the, Country of Northumberland, widely regarded as the most haunted castle in England. The first room of the castle we investigated was the Great Hall, a huge room with an enormous banqueting table at its center. Some of the castle's stories were relayed to us here, and an EVP session was started. I placed my digital voice recorder on the table, and the guide started to call out and ask the spirits questions. After 15 minutes or so, we heard no clear responses other than sounds, which could probably be attributed to a building of such an age, so we moved on. Made our way through the castle, attempting Ouija board sessions with mixed results. We made our way to the dungeon, which is very small room with markings scratched into the mortar where prisoners have kept count of how many days they have left to live. The prisoners could expect to have their arms and legs broken before being thrown 20 feet down a hole into an obliate and left there to die either from starvation or their injuries. Sometimes prisoners would start to eat chunks of flesh from others and even their own bodies in a vain attempt to prolong their life. It was in the room adjacent to the dungeon where the experiencing a chilling communication with the spirit who had first made contact via the Ouija board and then proceeded to open and close a door on request. There were no drafts. However, a 15 degree centigrade change in temperature was noted when the spirit was present. The activity stopped when another group joined us. The crowd seemed to scare it away. Next was a torture chamber filled with sick and deranged implements of torture. The floor is on a slope so blood could drain away from one side of the room. For many thousands of Scots, this would have been the last place they ever saw. The torturer here was a man called John Sage. He was a major celebrity in the day. Sage was a brutal man. He hated the Scots and he reveled in the role of castle torturer, even devising some devices of his own. There's boiling pot gadgets for gouging eyes out, barrels full of spikes. They would have had a prisoner tied in and rolled around until their flesh was ripped from their body and they died in agony. There are cages that would have been attached to a prisoner's stomach and a starved rat would be put inside. And the only way out for the rat was to eat his way out through the victim. The guy told us how the prisoners would scream out, crying for their lives to be ended rather than be tortured by this sadistic bastard. They wanted to die quickly, but Sage 
had other plans. This is where our ghost hunt officially ended, and we all made our way home for a rest after an eventful night. The following day, I was looking through the photographs I had taken, but couldn't see anything out of the ordinary. So I started listening to my recordings on the DVR. I couldn't believe my ears. I would captured a sound, what sounded like a voice, right after the guide had called out in the Great Hall. The first room we visited, it was too fast and hard to make out, so I slowed it down in around half speed with some audio software, and it became as clear as crystal. Given that this recording was made hours before we finally made it down to the torture room, before we heard the stories of the gruesome acts that were carried out, before we heard that prisoners begged to have their lives ended, the voice recorded on my DVR said in a gruff male voice, Kill me. Kill me. As clear as day. I was in absolute shock, and the voice still gives me chills now when I think about it. I think it's sad that these spirits seem destined to relive these most desperate of moments. They're still in pain and still crying out to have their suffering ended. I absolutely love the show. My dad passed away not too long ago, and I've been desperately searching for affirmation of the afterlife, so I know he's okay. You and your listeners are providing that for me, and I'm so grateful. Keep up the good work, and if you ever visit the UK... Be sure to contact us and we'll show you around haunted Newcastle and its jaunty ghosts. Thoughts on that exciting Number cornucopia one, of stuff. I would love to go visit them. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I do all the ghosts like I wouldn't do that thing that they did, but my God, I would love to visit them. That would be awesome. So let's do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, like back in that day, Like, we think the world is twisted now. It was really effed up back then. I know. (laughs) You know, like, oh, you stole a pig from farmer down the road. We're going to quarter you. And then they tie him up to horses and make the horses go in four different directions. You know, it's like. Yes. Like, we're going to tar and feather you, literally. And like the whole rat thing, like they would devise these sick, sick, sick ways to torture people. You know, like Anne Boleyn gets her head chopped off by her husband and people pack a picnic lunch Mm -hmm. to go watch it. Well, I got to say, honestly, the headings were like hangings, you know, it was like, well, let's go watch. You want to do ham salad at the hangings, turkey salad at the quarterings. Well, and, of course, uh, everybody and, does that. Yeah. And when they do the, it, the lion thing, that's usually like a, sometimes like a, a, a light Italian or something, a little vinaigrette on there. You want that. That goes really well when you're watching that. And of course, a tasty Diet Coke. <laughs> because they had them in the 1200s. Exactly. But, you know, so it was almost like they they kind of loved coming up, you know, that whole medieval torture thing. Yeah. You know, when you listen to that story, you're like, yeah, bullshit. No, that stuff happened. Yeah. Like medieval torture was a thing. And they really thought of they had so many torture devices that they used on people that I can't imagine a place like that would be full of people just like kill me now. Like, yeah, like, but to them, the kind thing to do would be to kill them. Yeah. But they didn't deserve it because they stole a horse or they stole, you know, they defiled, defiled the guy's daughter or whatever it was. Or Cocker Spaniel. Or Cocker Spaniel. And it didn't even have to do it. We just said that you did. Yeah. And so they just thought of these really sick ways to torture people. Yeah. I mean, if you ever like look or read a book about the medieval torture shit, uh, it's disturbing. I mean, it's like, holy shit. Like this really took some sadistic yeah. thinking. It's like, and they, but it's always like, but wait, there's more. And there's then it more. Does this. And here's the device. And this is how the device worked. Yeah. And so that's why I would be fascinated by taking a tour of a castle like that. I just uh. don't want to do the ghost tour. So I hope they don't mind if when we go visit, I chicken out and I, like, yeah, I don't want to do the ghost tour. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes when people say they're, you know, touring someplace, they'll, they'll feel the pain or the emotions of those who suffered. Oh there. my God. Could you imagine? Oh my God. Like, Oh my God, I'm being quartered. You know, that's just, Oh, that to me. That's just fucking disturbing as shit. And it would just be full of desperation. Like this yeah. feeling of, of it's not just sadness or yeah. like, you know, we're going to die. It would be terror. Yeah. 
And I don't think, and I don't think those people's spirits are actually there haunting it. I think it's the impression and the energy that was expelled. I don't, I I don't, I hope not. I I hope like, like that would be really twisted. Not only did you have to go through that shit, which could have been something you maybe did or didn't do. Yeah. You know, it's not like all these people are guilty of the crimes. Like, Hell, Anne Boleyn got her head chopped off because Henry VIII accused her of sleeping with her brother, which I don't think she ever did, Mm -hmm. among other things. But, you know... Still fighting that Anne Boleyn fight, aren't you? The good fight for Anne... I'm just kidding. Oh, I... I, You know, I think Anne Boleyn, you know, she... I I think she made some bad decisions. I know nothing about her. She was Henry VIII's second wife. Okay. Okay. And he was married to this other one, Catherine of Aragon. Like, so she was she was on the second season. Like, let me just name drop. But um but Anne Boleyn, Henry became obsessed with her. And so he wanted to divorce his wife and get with her. Mm. But his wife was Catholic mm. and she didn't believe in divorce. So he's like, well, I'll show you. I'm just gonna start the Church of England. So there. <laughs> That's what he did. And then he got with Anne, and then he's like, I think then somebody else caught his eye and he's kind of done with her. So you can't divorce her. So I'll just have her killed. Take her head off. It's just, I mean, that's the shit they did. And people went and watched it that day. I, and I couldn't imagine, like I did go to where they held her yeah, and a couple of his other wives. And then like to be in this room, which is this dank, cold, towers the towers of london and then the day it happens they come get you and walk you down the whole way you know you're getting ready to have your head cut off like i can't imagine like i guess you gotta find some peace with the lord because i i don't like i couldn't imagine that it's it's interesting because uh the soundtrack to this whole movie that you're talking about uh, that uh, that was uh, put out uh, the the the, sec- the season the second season where Anne Boleyn was uh, was offed. Uh, it was actually uh, King George. Uh, it was he became a rapper in it too, uh, <laughs> and the soundtrack was great. Uh, it was called "Still Not a Player," and uh, he just you know he got down and it was like. I've always thought that's what Henry VIII's voice would sound like. Yep, that's exactly, that's him. That's him on that track. And oh, who knew? Still don't want to be a player no more. I just behead a lot. Uh, yeah, so. It's like, I want to be a player some more. I behead her. Yeah. You know, can you imagine the gangster rap back in that era? Mm. <laughs> like, don't mess with that. <laughs> Uh, I, I did want to hear this because I, I was very curious when I was reading that story. What would it sound like if if Robert Stack read read a little piece of that? Just just Ooh. one of the real gruesome Ooh. parts of the story. Let's let's hear what that would sound like. There is a boiling pot, gadgets for gouging eyes out, barrels full of spikes that would have had a prisoner tied in and rolled around until the flesh was ripped from the body, and they died in agony. There are cages that would have been attached to a prisoner's stomach and a starved rat would be put inside. And the only way out for the rat was to eat his way out through the victim. <laughs> like hearing it again, like, you know, I'm going to be dreaming about that shit tonight. It almost sounds like he's reading off the Pizza Hut menu a little bit. Like, <laughs> it kind of does, doesn't it? <laughs> like, mm, the I think rat, I'll have that. The rat part, but the pepperoni. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh <laughs> You could probably like mix that yummy, in a little yummy. bit to make it even more absurd. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Let's uh, jump over here to a phone call. I'll talk really slow as I try to get it loaded. There we go. Okay, now which one did I load? Because there's two here. <laughs> I'm getting old. Hi. Let's hear your phone call. Hi. Hello, Tony. Uh, I actually have this story, and I'm not sure if it was a paranormal encounter or if it was um, something else. Because I I came home from work one night. It was pretty late, you know? And um, I I walked home. I unlocked my my door, and my family wasn't home at all. My family left to an event, and I got left behind. And as I unlocked the door... The moon was shining light right behind me. So my shadow was like portrayed on the floor. 
and I saw a shadow on the fridge, and I thought my my shadow was the one in the fridge. So I started moving, you know, goofing around a bit, and I saw that that shadow didn't move, but mine did. So when I stare, I kept staring at the shadow, and I made the outline of a man, and it looked like a pretty big guy, you know, he was as tall as my fridge, which is slightly taller than me, and I'm like five ten, and as I saw like the guy was just sort of like standing there, not doing anything. I, I got closer, and it really was a shadow. It wasn't an intruder or anything. And I got closer. I closed the door behind me. Oh, no, I didn't close the door. I just got closer and next to the light switch next to it. And I turned on the light switch while staring at the shadow, and it disappeared. And I never saw it again. But I went to go visit the family somewhere else in another part of the, another country. And um, when I went to go visit, I saw the same shadow that my that was on my fridge. And there was the same man. It looked exactly like the shadow that line. It had like a nice shirt. It looked like it had like a bell, you know? Yeah, it looked like a pretty big guy. And I saw the exact same man. He was part of my family, but he was like not. He was more of my cousin's uh, side. But when I met him, I instantly realized that was that was the guy. And I, I did tell some family over there, and some of them did give me opinions like, oh, maybe it was, um, you had a little vision of who you were going to meet at some point in time or real soon. You know, because it only happened like a month ago or two. So when I saw it, I, it scared me a little. You know, I'm like, whoa, hold on. But after I saw that shadow and all the activity at my house, I think it stopped. I haven't heard anything from the shadow. And, well, I'm going to call the little paranormal guy, the little ghost I have. I'm going to call him Manuel. Just because the guy that I met, his name was Manuel, but in Spanish it was Manuel. And... That That's basically my story. I still have a few more encounters I can share with you. Some that actually freaked me out a little more. But this one was the one that stuck onto me just because it it was impossible for me to actually imagine that. That was an actual thing. Like, I never saw the guy in my life. I never saw any photos or knew even knew his name. I just knew that my cousin did have a grandpa, but I never knew anything about them. So this one did scare me a little more than all the other ones just because... I had no way of actually faking it. So that's when all my logic sort of went out the window there. I'm like, yeah, that's that's got to be him. It couldn't have been me, you know, imagining something. It had to be some shadow. Anyway, I love hearing your show. I'm going to start watching from the time, like, I, I have started watching, but I'm going to start watching. I'm going to skip a lot of episodes just to, like, get to the point, like, after this message. I'm going to start watching tonight and maybe nights before this. And I would love for you to give me your opinion. And make fun of it, of course. It'd be like, I have some crazy kid just called us, you know? Like, I would love to hear your opinion, your jokes, anything. It's funny. Keep up the good work, man. Goodbye. The, the time I have nothing to, like, make fun of it with. He's like, make fun of it. You know? Like, people are like, oh, my God, I can't believe you said that. It was such a heartwarming story. Like, I know. But, you know. <laughs> Break it up. Is that what we're known for? I guess People so. call in and we make fun of their stories. I don't. We don't make fun of them. We just, you know, we put, we make it I mean, a lighter well, topic. Well, I mean, we kind of have in this episode. Never, never, <laughs> Maybe. ever, ever. No. Okay, so I didn't tell. Okay, so help me with the story a little bit. Yeah. So he comes home and he sees a shadow behind him, but he hears his shadow, and there's a taller one next to him. Yeah. Right. I think so. And he can't debunk that because here's me. You mm -hmm. can tell when you, that's your shadow. It's yep. like, that's me because I'm moving my head right now. Yep. That guy right next to me mm -hmm. is not moving his head. Yep. So you could look around and debunk that. It's like, okay, there's nothing that would be making a shadow and it's not moving or, but, which is creepy. But so then he went and visited some people and they thought that could be the ghost of like a spirit of something, Manuel. I believe Tony? so. I believe so. Okay. Because I'm like, it could, it kind of, and then I wasn't sure because it kind of sounded like he had a spirit in his house anyway mm -hmm. at the end. So maybe that is there to protect him. I mean, that's not funny, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I think not there, as a as a shadow. Yeah, I think there could be. It's not necessarily a negative thing. It's just no. there's something there. And that's just it happens to be how it presents itself. 
I so. mean, if you got like for real, if mm-hmm. there's a shadow guy in your house protecting you, and mm-hmm. once in a while you see him on the uh, reflection on the fridge or something, I'd be down with that. Keep I mean, your shadow guy. Thank you for being here. Exactly. Exactly. I Keep- like you. So, and you're awesome. Have a and couple you're protecting more. Me. Have a couple more seances, maybe a few more Ouija board sessions, and invite more friends over. The more, the merrier. That's how it always works with spirits, and uh, everyone has a great time. It never ends badly. No, we're not talking about alcohol. Not those spirits. <laughs> it never ends. It always ends badly there. Uh, but when you're actually summoning the dead, there's nothing that could ever go wrong. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I mean, it always ends up in just a funny little, that was entertaining moment. Yeah, I love it. All right, that's going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the show, become an extra podcast person. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Get access to all of our bonus episodes, advanced episodes, and a lot more. We greatly appreciate your support. Until next time, for all of us at Real Ghost Stories Online, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening. 